Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're gonna to build a scene entirely from scratch. I think this is the first time I'm doing something like this. So it's a very simple one, just a chessboard with some pawns. And yeah, it, it'll be a long one, so I'm just gonna get straight into it. So the way I did the pawn, I am sick, so I'll be sniffing and clearing my throat and all that stuff. But the first way I did the way I did this pawn is I used a reference, just Google just the word pawn. Not that guy, but the, the chess piece type of pawn. And then I found out that you get a bunch of references. And then I use this one over here. I use this on my front plane. <clears throat> you take your pen tool. And I just very basically um, just went around here. I just traced it like that, like so. <clears throat> In your situation, you probably want to spend a bit more time on this and try and get a lot more detail. I do sort of regret not putting in extra detail on this scene, but what can you do? You move on and yeah. So you can see I'm just roughly tracing around this whole thing over here, like so. And then <coughs> this part I find the most difficult to get right but we'll see how we do. Um, let's just do that. And then here we're gonna zero out, we're gonna start smoothing everything out now. So we're gonna zero out that coordinate, zero, zero, and then this should be around 430, yep. Try to make this tutorial multiple, multiple times, but I think this should be my final time doing this. We will see how it goes. So here you ideally want a straight floor, which I probably should have thought about when I did this. I guess this is around straight. And then I'm gonna move that there. Push this up there a bit. Um, so, and then we can check the rest of the model. We wanna spend more time on this. Like I said, um, I don't wanna spend 30 minutes on just this part. Over here, don't need that. We do need that, I'm lying. Let's make this smaller and then we bring it this way. Push that up and then make that straight. Push that in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it inside a lathe nerb. And then we're gonna, this part I was the most worried about. So that doesn't look perfectly round. So I'm just gonna go off eyesight here and try to get this as round as possible. Like so, no. So just these points here and see, maybe we can do something with this. There we go, that's close enough. So that's how I got my pawn model. Um, we're going to go and bring out all the lines and we're gonna start just giving us enough subdivisions to work off of. So firstly, I'm gonna go uh, natural like that. That'll solve, us, solve a lot of problems for us. And then here I'll go probably around 50, 50 subdivisions. Um, we are going very close up and it's also not, there aren't that many objects in the scene. So it's fine having a lot of polygons. You could probably even go more than this. So now you want to save your project. Um, probably just call this tutorial. Let's see, tutorial. Let's just overwrite one that we already have. Um, ch tutorial chess. Replace that. And then we're going to bring in a cube. I'm going to make it around three centimeters high because uh, we're just scaling this down to around the size of a normal chess piece, which. Um, judging by my own eyesight, it should be around three centimeters. I don't actually have a chest set at home, so I couldn't do that. But it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not that important, but having it around scale will help with your photorealism in the end. So we're gonna call this um, mesh save. It will duplicate this. We'll make this um, editable and we'll optimize it so that all the seams and stuff zip up. And then we're gonna go create a new layer, call this mesh save and then we can drag these in and just get rid of all that and then we can call this pawn. 
like so. We're gonna place it on the floor by taking its height and then dividing it by two, like that. Now it's sitting perfectly on the floor. Or is it? No, it's not. And the reason why is its axis center is probably off. So let's just make sure that the axis is in the center. And then we repeat that, repeat that step like so. And now it's sitting perfectly on the floor over there. We're gonna add in a floor. This will be our checkerboard. Make it around 30 centimeters in size. If you want to make the whole chest set, you can, but for this case, we're only going to be running, uh, rendering a very small set of the actual board. Uh, the way I did the outside part of this board is you take your plane, which will be our checker, and then we'll do this and call it um, wooden border. <coughs> and then we'll hide the checker so we don't edit that by mistake. Then we'll go here and extrude it up like that. We will delete that and then we'll go and select everything. We'll extrude it outwards with our caps ticked on, like so. And then, then we can select, I'm just thinking which way is the best way to do this. We'll select all of these. I guess we don't actually need the bottom selected. We'll select the top. We will bevel this and give it around three subdivisions. Then we will select these um, outside parts. So now we have all the outside pieces selected. We can go and extrude those like so. Maybe give it around five, six subdivisions, and then that will be our border, but that's a bit too extruded, so we're just gonna extrude it a bit more, a bit less. That, and that's how I did the board part. So we have our checkerboard, and then the outside board, it's also a bit too extruded on the sides, but you know, you should spend as much time as you want on this. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to. So, now what we want to do is we're going to get into texturing now. So we'll open up our live viewer. It's going to let this thing verify that I've actually purchased the thing because it does that every single time I open it, which is very annoying. But what can you do? <coughs> open up our live viewer. We, we need some lighting so we can actually see what's going on. So I'm going to bring in an HDRI. Any textures or HDRIs I, I use will be from polygon.com. But these six, however, these one, two, three, four, five, six, I bought from another place. They might actually be free, and I'll drop a link down in the description for you, but these are the HDRIs I'll be using. So we'll start off with this one. We're gonna start off with our checkerboard, and then we'll do the border and then the pawn piece. So um, start off with these, save it. We'll bring in a new glossy material, we'll call this checker. Now there's multiple ways of doing your um, checkerboard. The way I did it is I used Octane's checker thingy here, Octane's checks, but you'll see here it's gray over there, which means it's difficult to use in bump or displacement maps, which is the only downside for me. Other than that, it worked out fine. Um, so I'm just gonna scale this down till it's around our pawn size. So we just need to bring the pawn back in so we can see. like so and then I feel like I just moved something yeah I just did okay and then we're gonna go in and start making it look all pretty now your lighting um, definitely has an effect on this so I'm just gonna make sure that we have some sunlight going so we can see what's going on like so now that we have reflections going, we can start um, making this look all nice and woody. Now you can make your checkerboard woody. Um, I don't think in my original one I did, but for the sake of this tutorial, I make it uh, a wood checkerboard instead of like a plastic one. So I'm gonna bring in some wood textures. We'll use this one. This one's a nice, very subtle wood texture. Um, just drag the scale down until it 
fits. Um, it's very, I think it's about right. Just get up close. See, that's around the right size. So now we've got that scale corrected. We can just pop this inside our specular. Replace this float. We'll make the specular probably around 25%. So, I mean, 25 times, not 25%. Then we'll drag in our glossiness as well, and then go float. And then we have a very basic wood, um, what is checkerboard? If you don't like the bumps, you can either turn it down or you can just turn them off completely. Uh, it all depends on how you want it to look. But for this situation, I'll probably just make it about 0.5 in the power. Don't want it to be too intense. And then <clears throat> now we'll add our second layer, which will be our dirt and our fingerprints and such. So we'll go and create a mix material. We'll pop that on here. And then I'll go and create a diffuse. This is the standard way that I do it. We'll go and create a diffuse and call this overlay. And then put the overlay at the top, checkers at the bottom. Here we will go and add a fingerprint texture, which will be my surface overlays like that. And just to make sure our scale is correct, we'll make this red just so you can see it. And the fingerprints look big right now, so I'm just going to go into my UV and turn this down until the fingerprints get small enough to actually see. And then you just want to adjust your fingerprints. Um, keep in mind you're trying to keep it to scale. If you're trying to go for photorealism, if you're not, then do whatever you want. But you want to make sure that your fingerprints match around what an actual fingerprint would on a board. And in this case, they'll probably be a bit bigger compared to the checks, compared to the checkers or whatever these cubes you call them. And then <coughs> now what we can do is we can open up our node editor. We can start getting fancy now. We're going to go in here and we'll we will add in a image texture. We'll go here and add in the add over there, and then we'll drop that there. We'll just delete this line. So now in the in this new image texture we just added, we will add some dirt, which will be our dirt wipes over here. You can go and hit UV transform, and then just update this node editor so that thing pops up there. And then here we can go and adjust our scale again until it fits nicely. Uh, just get our scale around around the right size. This is a bit more difficult to see. Uh, maybe I should make it, let's see it. Let's just see where, where our scale's at. I think this is too small. I think that's probably around right. And then uh, for the sake of an extra realism, <coughs> we'll go and add in an add over there as well. And then we will add in a image texture and we'll add a third layer of dirt and then in this one, we'll just delete that line. In this one, we will go and add in some, where is this thing? Stains, liquid droplets. And then here we will, let's just see what our scale's like. Our scale is probably too big once again. And we'll just scale this down until it feels right. Let's just zoom in here so we can see what's going on. Now we'll make this white again. Now you can see what's going on better. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we'll go on it, turn on this opacity to probably 0.25. Just give myself some more room here. Um, and then we'll go and add in the extra, all the other textures. So we'll add this one in next, which will be over here. I'll probably turn this down to 0.25 as well. And then we'll add in our fingerprints as well on top of that. And we'll turn this down to 0.25 as well. Um, let's just bring in a different HDRI. Lighting is very important. So I would figure out what angle and stuff you want your lights to look, um, you want your lights and stuff to be first. And then I would go and do the texturing 
because your lighting can change. Even the angle that you're looking at the board will change everything as well. So um, let's just let this load in. Let's see, this might be too much dirt for me. So I'll probably go and turn all of this down just slightly, uh, maybe 0.2 and just paste these in here, 0.2, 0.2. And then we'll add in some bumps, <coughs> which will be down here. Just move these things up the way so we have some more room. Create an image texture. Pop that inside the bump. Just swap these things around so that they're in the right place. And inside the image texture, we will add in a scratched surface imperfection like this. This is probably, I use this so much and I should really get some more scratch textures, but <laughs> I use this one so much. So we're just gonna, not invert, we're gonna go and scale this down until it's around the right size for our board. And I think that's around the right size. Then we can just drop down the power to 0 0.001, 0 0.001. And then that should be enough just for it to be a very, very subtle, subtle, subtle thing. And I don't actually like this HDRI. I like the one that we had before, which was this one, I think. Nope, it was this one. It was not that one, it was bathroom. No, it wasn't, it was kitchen. I think I'm right now. Yes, it was kitchen. So this one is just a lot easier to see. And once again, I forget, you should probably go and fix this first because this makes a big difference on your final image. You can see how completely different it is now. Now everything starts to look a lot better. So <clears throat> now we can see a lot clearer as well. I just flipped under the board by there, over there by accident. Just getting our ang camera angle back, which is around here. And <clears throat> now we can take a look. So our scratches are very, very subtle. I think I'll bring them out a bit more by just changing this point two. And then, so you now you can start to see our scratches a bit more. A bit too intense actually, 0.15. And then we'll take a look at our overlays, which will be our dirt marks and stuff. Those look fine, I think, for this. And I think that's that part done, really. I think that looks fine. You can spend more time on that if you want to. Um, we're gonna create this outer wood part because it's a very quick thing to do. So we'll call this wooden border. Now, because we got our scale right, for our normal map on the checkerboard. We don't need to go through that again. We can pretty much just copy paste all these things inside our wooden border here. Did I spell this wrong? Yes, I did. Wooden border. We'll apply it to our border. We'll make it cubic. And then inside here, we'll just go and paste normal. And let's just close this node editor. I'm gonna save it because I feel like it's gonna crash. We'll copy our, def no, we'll copy our specular, paste it in there. We'll copy our roughness and paste it in there. <clears throat> and then we'll just copy our normal map and paste it inside our diffuse. And then we'll just replace it with our color. And now you can see, I can see that our scale and everything's correct and we don't have to worry about that. Now obviously yeah, this wooden part here, I spent more time in the original project. That's why it doesn't look so um, odd now. But yeah, so we're gonna go and add, we can just copy over the scratches as well since we got that scale right on the first time. And then we can also, we could also do the, Overlays as well. So we'll go here, create a new mixed material. We'll duplicate this overlay layer, even though we don't. Mm, let's keep things simple. We'll just keep it to one overlay layer. So we'll just use the original overlay layer, overlay layer that we have. We'll replace that there. And then here, we can probably just copy this and paste it here. Except in here, 
Well, inside our node editor, we'll go and make sure everything's um, not all over the place. Inside our node editor, you will delete this section. We don't want these stains liquids here. So that's all we want over there. And this is the wrong way around. There we go. <coughs> so now we've got our um, overlays and stuff applied to this as well. You can obviously adjust it and stuff to your liking. And then if you want your checkerboard to be a bit more wooden, what you could also do is you could go, this is just a very subtle effect, which you can try. Um, in some cases, what I would do is I would make the outer, the, the parts that stick out the most um, a bit scratched off, uh, make, it, make it appear like it's a bit more scratched off and you can see some wood coming up, but that's a bit advanced and I don't wanna go into that just yet. So we'll just do a very basic one, a bit of a cheat. Inside our diffuse, I'll go and let's copy our normal map and paste it inside our opacity. We'll just update the node editor. So here you should see that it's pasted this here. And then I'll, we'll just take out, we'll just take this here and move it up there. Like so. Just delete that. And then here we'll go and create a add. We'll make sure that this, I guess it's fine at the top. We'll put this at the bottom and then here we'll replace this with a color, with our color map. And now you'll see that it's showing in the blacks. I think if you swap it around, it'll show in the whites. We'll just see, we'll test that now. I was wrong. So I haven't, I could probably figure it out how to select which color you want, but you know, we're not gonna do that now. And then to just adjust the opacity, we can use a float. <clears throat> oh, it's because I'm being strong. We should use a mix, not an add, my bad. We use a mix, not an add, like that. Save it, and then we'll put the float up there. So now if I move all this out the way so that we have more room. Now we can use the floats to adjust how, um, you can adjust the effect of the wood so you can adjust it this way. But I should make the tutorial where I sort of give that scratched off effect where the height, the highest parts of the board are scratched off and have a wooden feeling, but no, I'm not gonna do that now. So, for my case, I think I, it looks better black, but I thought I would just show you that. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this. We don't need this. Um, let's do that. Now we're gonna, we're gonna texture the pawn. Now the pawn is a plastic material, so it's a bit different. Um, <clears throat> the way I did the pawn is you create a glossy material and because of the way I modeled this pawn, the, the What's it called? The UV maps and stuff are all over the place. So I changed it to flat so that we don't get any weird seams and stuff like that going on. I'm gonna change the color to red just because it's easier to see the bumps and all that stuff. And that's why I did it in my original render. And then here we can go and change the index to 1.6 and then the roughness 0.1. And now we already get this very plasticky look. Now we want very, very, very subtle details on here. We want this to look like it has bumps and scratches, like it's been used a lot, but we don't want it to be too intense. So we're just gonna go and create a bump map inside here. We're gonna go paste a bump map in there. And then we're gonna go and scale this down until we feel that it's small enough. <clears throat> and then we can do and drop down our power by a bit, by quite a lot. And we just want it to be very, very subtle. This is probably too much even. So we make it 0 0.05. And then <clears throat> we can go and do our surface, surface imperfections here as well. Um, I mean, our dirt and fingerprints stuff as well. Um, we can just copy the, we can go create a mixed material, place that on the pawn. We'll put the glossy at the bottom, the overlay at the top. And then here again, we can just go and copy paste this like so, and then we can go and delete that, um, we can go and delete that section because we don't want that, like so. And now you'll see that um, everything is to scale. Once again, you can go and um, adjust your fingerprints until that you, until you see a fingerprint actually on the piece and then that will give a, a nice effect. But um, that'll take a 
bit of time for me to find it and adjust it correctly. I'm seeing these very subtle imperfections on the thing. And then <coughs> for extra effect, you can you can use this method for uh, for multiple ways of doing things, but we're going to go and put a dirt map inside here. <coughs> put a dirt and we will plug the dirt in there. We'll turn up the strength and then we'll go invert normal. <coughs> we'll turn down the radius. So now you see the outermost parts um, are going black. I'm doing that to give off an effect like give off give off the effect that all the outermost parts of the piece are, are getting worn off and stuff like that, like in real life. And then we'll go and add a gradient <coughs> in between. And then here we'll go and copy this red texture, which is pretty much just um, red, 95%, and then red, 95%. But here we'll go 85%. And now it's just a very, very subtle, the edges are very subtly darker. You can use this method to drive different textures. So you, you can make it look like the pawn is actually a metal piece and then the outer parts are scratched off. And then you, you can use a noise map so that you get some very different, you get some differences and bumps and stuff like that. But that might take a bit of time and I don't want to do that in this tutorial. So that's how I did my pawn piece. And yeah, I think that's how I did all the texturing and stuff. And then literally all I did is I placed some more pawns uh, in different colors and then I placed them around the right place and then I made sure that this checkerboard aligned with the board and stuff like that. And then you set up a camera like so. You give it some depth of field and then you go and set the um, focus point and because it's to scale um, everything just works out well for you and then you get that nice area and then you can just go and adjust your lighting. The lighting system that I used was this one <coughs> and then I just adjusted the light like that. Like that and then I obviously had some more pawns and stuff in the background and I also had my logo here which really um, brought out that detail and I used a, a noise map to give it off that scratched off feeling and stuff like that But that's how I did my chessboard in Cinema 4D and Octane. I hope you guys enjoyed If you want any more tutorials, you can let me know. I have been sick and I also injured my leg and then I have to go for tooth surgery soon. So <laughs> It's been a bit difficult to make stuff, but Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day and goodbye